y'all? How y'all doing, man? You already know the fires. It's another episode of Notable Prisons and them inmates that's occupied them. And today we are gonna take a trip to USP Can. But first, one drop some com. You got some feedback in the comments. Let me know where y'all watching from. Uh, and uh, most importantly, get your lighters ready. It's it's about to go down. So, anyways, like I was saying. We are about to take a trip back east to Pennsylvania to USP Can Am, it's a, which is a high security United States federal prison for male inmates with a satellite prison camp for the minimum security male inmates that's operated by the feds. USP Can is located in Can Am Township, Wayne County, northeastern Pennsylvania. Little, little, let me give you all a little bit of history about the place, all right? Right. USP Can is a, is a 170,000 square yard facility designed by David R. Kassara Associates, a structural engineering and consulting of Rock, Rochester, New York for $141 million. USP Can Am opened in March 05 and designed to house 1,088 inmates in six housing units, six V-shaped buildings facing each other and, lo and larger maintenance buildings surrounded a central yard with a tower in the middle. Six additional towers are lined along the rectangle shaped facility. This facility is surrounded by a lethal electrical double fence. And the cells, of course, are approximately um, 13 feet by six feet in size, equipped with a bunk bed, stainless steel, a uh, steel sink toilet combination, a small table with a non-removable stool. Cells are usually occupied by two inmates and are air conditioning. The administrative and disciplinary disciplinary unit called the special housing unit, AKA the SHU, can hold approximately 250 inmates. Um, inmates transit usually occurs at least twice a week to and from USP CAN. With Monday being the airlift day, where inmates are brought in the Harrisburg Airport by bus for secure transit to another prison, the trips to the next prison occur either by another bus trip or a flight on what is often called Con Air. If you've ever seen that movie, let me know in the comments what's your favorite part of the movie. I thought that was a great movie. Actually, I'm going to probably watch it today when I drink a beer. What beer should I drink when I watch it? Let me know. Anyways, Tuesday is generally the transit day for inmates going to or from MDC Brooklyn and MCC Manhattan when it was open. Yeah, they definitely needed a plane as much traffic they got in New York from what I've seen. <laughs> but uh, a couple brief notable incidents. On um, March, on uh, April tw uh, 25th, 2010, Alan Hurley, an inmate serving a 37-year sentence for multiple robberies, became involved in a physical altercation with Joseph Kane. While they were both in Hurley's cell, he, uh, Hurley pulled out a homemade prison knife and stabbed him 92 times. Uh, Kane, an associate of the Gambino crime family in New York City, who, who was serving a life sentence for racketeering murder and murder, he died on the scene. Hurley was convicted of manslaughter on the June 21st, 2012, and was sentenced to life in prison. Damn. So apparently he was about to come home at some point, but uh, for whatever reason, you know, he felt the need to take out um, Joseph O'Kane. That's crazy. 92 times? That's like the dude in Utah. And uh, I'll give you another one. And on February 25th, 2013, an inmate of the prison attacked and murdered a correction officer, Eric Williams. Um, J Jesse Khan Yu was already jailed for life for slaying a gang in a rival er in, in Zara, Arizona, and he was identified as a suspect in the murder of Officer Eric Williams. Khan Yu and two other gang members fatally shot Carlos Garcia outside a laundry facility in East Phoenix, Arizona, in August 2002 to further assist the gang's criminal conduct. According to state prosecutors in Maricopa County, Arizona court records, Khan Yu, 36, was scheduled to com complete his federal sentence in September 2013 and would have immediately been returned to Arizona to be begin serving his life term for 2002 murder. Khan Yu at the time of the incident was serving an 11-year term for gang-related drug trafficking. Damn, he took out a guard. He must have been pissed. But, uh, okay, time to get it started. First off, we have 
Gregory Abbott. He was charged with the connection of the 2019 college admissions bribery scandal. But he was released at the start of COVID on January 28, 2020. Next, we have John Regis and Timothy and Timothy Regis. I'm assuming they must be brothers or something. No, father and son who uh, father and son executives at Adelphia Communications Corporation convicted in 04 of bank fraud and other charges for stealing millions of dollars from the company and concealing its debt from investors to keep its stock price high. John was released on in 2016. And Timothy was released January 14th, 2022. So they just, he just got out this year. This is going to be the first Thanksgiving they just spent together in quite some time. Um, next we have Juan Mata Ballesterios. Uh, he's a drug kingpin with ties to the Medellin cartel in Colombia. And he was convicted in 1990 of orchestrating the 1985 kidnap and murder of a DEA drug enforcement agent, uh, Mr. Enrique Carmarina. RIP to that man. Definitely, I would recommend you guys watch Narcos. They go into detail about all that good stuff. And uh, But he's serving a life sentence under the name Juan Ramon Mata Lopez. And he was transferred to USMCFP Springfield. Next, we have Abdul Qadir. He's an Al-Qaeda supporter and convicted of terrorism conspiracy for his role in a foiled plot to bomb JFK Airport in Queens uh, in 2007. Three co-conspirators are serving sentence at ten sentences at other federal facilities. Yeah, he definitely, America ain't taking a light to a terrorist. i tell you that right now. Are you lucky he didn't get sent to Gitmo? Next, we have Sean Yassif, U.S. citizen and president of the Cambodian Freedom Fighters. He was convicted in 08 of leading a series of deadly attacks against civilian and government targets in an attempt to oust Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen in 2000. And he's serving a life sentence. We have Mohammed Shibin. He was a Somalian pirate leader convicted in 2012 of piracy, kidnapping, hostage taking for acting as a ransom negotiator during the hijacking of a civilian vessel quest in 2010 and the oil tanker in 2011. Shipping is the highest ranking pirate ever prosecuted. Damn. That was like the uh, the plug of the pirates, not the plug, but, uh, you know, the uh Damn, what's the word I'm looking for? Like kingpin or something. Either way, he had some juice if he if they give him that title. Next, we have Stephen Crea. He is convicted in 2019 for murder and racketeering, and he is serving a life sentence. Now we have Luke Sommer, former U.S. Army Ranger, pled guilty to bank robbery in 08 for masterminding the takeover robbery of a bank in Tacoma, Washington. He pled guilty in 2010 to attempting to solicitate, solicit the murder of an assistant United States attorney. Wow. They definitely ain't letting him out. Man, oh man. I'm going to smoke this for you, player. Take a couple hits for you. Next, we have Timothy L. Tyler. He's an American who was sentenced to life in prison without uh, parole for possession and distribution of LSD under the federal three strikes law in August 2016. After serving 24 years and 27 days behind bars, Tyler was granted clemency by Barack Obama. Side note, funny story. I went to a festival not too long ago and I was in the crowd and, uh, you know, I'm in there. I'm, I'm blowing and whatnot, blowing my backwoods and shit. And some dude walks up to me and says, hey, hey, man, you want to hit? And I'm looking, I'm like, I don't see no weed in his head. He's like, I got some, I got some LSD. I was like, yeah, bro, it's a hard pass. I appreciate the offer, though. I, I, I really do. You, you a good, you a good fellow, but I'm a, I'm a just pass on that. And he, and he proceeded through the crowd asking everyone, hey, you want some LSD? You want some LSD? Like, bro, I'm not taking no narcotics from strangers, man. They got too much of that stuff going around. Next, we have Benjamin Ariano Felix. 
former kingpin of the Tijuana cartel, sentenced to 25 years for racketeering and conspiracy for, to launder money. And he's serving a 15-year sentence and scheduled for release in about 10 years. Well, 2033. He's coming home. So, you know, what he does when he comes home is up to him. Um, next, we have Paul Manafort. He's an American political consultant and former campaign chairman for the U.S. President Donald Trump. Manafort was found guilty of tax fraud, bank fraud, and witness tampering. But, you know, his boy, Big Trump, pardoned him, and Kodak Black, and Lil Wayne, and a few other people. I think that's kind of cool that a, a president has that ability to like, you know what, you're the homie, I'm going to get you out anyway, fuck it. I wonder if he could have freed him if he was like in there for like murder or some crazy shit like that. Uh, let me know in the comments. We have Ronnell Wilson. He's a gang leader in a Staten Island, New York, murdered NYPD detective James Neilmore and Rodney Andrews, who were convicted in a sting operation to buy an illegal gun in 03. Wilson was initially on death row before having his sentence reduced to life without parole on the grounds of that he was mentally disabled. Damn, but he got lucky because boy, we was about to have to get our lighters ready. They're about to try to uh, smoke him. Definitely, you can't fuck around with these officers like that. They do not play. And now we have Alexandra, Alex, Alexander, Amon Cody. He he was one of the four members of the British ISIS Beatles and also known as Jihadi George. Cody was convicted of hostage taking providing material support of a terror organization for his role in the kidnapping, torture, and murders of dozens of Europeans and American citizens between 2012 and 2015. And he was convicted of beheading and torturing four Americans in 2021 and sentenced to life in prison. Another member of the ISIS beetle, El Shafi, El whatever the hell his name is, was also tried and convicted and received a life sentence. Get your lighters ready. They definitely smoked his ass. I'm surprised they didn't give him no crazy ass number like the guy in Colorado. Like 3,762 years and 22 days and 5 hours and 10 minutes and 3 seconds. Anyways, appreciate y'all for watching. Smack the subscribe button. Hit that like button. Stay tuned for more episodes. We dropping Monday and Friday. Guaranteed. Occasionally, I'll drop during the week when I'm not uh, busy and stuff. But appreciate y'all for watching. Bye.